Hey guys, I'm Alex Taylor from the Riding with Alex Taylor YouTube channel. Today we're going to be going over a very important factor to keep in mind when you're assembling your engine, which is piston to valve clearance. What is it you may ask? It may sound scary, but I promise it's simple. So let's dive into it now and see how to check it. Piston to valve clearance is exactly what it sounds like. Just a few factors, piston, valves, and the clearance between them. It is the acceptable clearance between your valves and your piston during engine operation. Without proper piston to valve clearance, you can severely damage your engine, so it's important to check it every time. You may wonder, why isn't it just right, or what factors impact the clearance? So let's go over a few of the major components that could change your clearance. Things like block and cylinder head decking and machining, deck height, camshaft load profiles, overall piston design, and compression height, just to name a few. This is a very important measure, so make sure to check it anytime you're building a new engine or changing major components like the ones I listed that might affect it. You've probably heard of multiple ways to check piston to valve clearance. There's some methods that are more complicated than others. This one, we're going to be using just some clay. You could go purchase it or maybe even steal some from your kid's toy box. However, this is, regardless, the simplest way to do it. Different engine combinations require different piston to valve clearance, so remember to take things like timing chain slack and solid versus hydraulic lifters into account. I'm a Chevy girl at heart, and today we're working with just that, the six liter iron block that's set up to run AFR 210 enforcer heads. No matter what engine you're working on, this technique should work just the same. Before diving into this, however, make sure your bottom end is completely assembled and your camshaft is degreed. I recommend cleaning the piston that you're going to be using with the carbon on it, oil residue, there is potential that your clay might not stick. Getting started, we're going to grab a small amount of putty and lightly press it on top of one of the pistons, just like this. Put it on to cylinder number four here. If you're installing a cam at the same time that you're changing the heads, you're gonna wanna use cylinder number one. But since we're not in this case, we're gonna go ahead and use cylinder number four because the piston's already at the top. With your new AFR cylinder head out of the box, you're going to wanna take and put a tester spring on an intake and an exhaust of the cylinder that you're working on. In this case, cylinder number four. This particular part number did come pre-assembled, which I do love, but we'll be taking the springs off of cylinder four and replacing with tester springs. I'm gonna put your retainer on your test spring, insert it over the valve stem. Try to keep everything centered. Once you get some pressure applied, you can really work on getting it centered. It's not a bad idea at this point to put a little oil on the face of the valves so the clay doesn't try to stick to the valves when they open. Now that the clay is in place and the valves have oil on them, I'm gonna install the head gasket onto the block followed by the cylinder head and bolt it down. I'm not gonna torque the head bolts, I'm just gonna snug them down. This doesn't account for the crush of the new head gasket. However, with that we're only talking say five thousandths. If you're within 5,000's clearance of the make or break, do not use this method. Now that the cylinder head is on, we can slide the push rods into place and bolt the rockers on to cylinder four. Now that everything's in place and ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the engine over a couple revolutions by hand so that the valves have a chance to imprint in the clay. Now let's take the head back off and see what we've got. With 
the head off, we can see how the clay imprinted. I did use a little bit more clay here than you would typically use, but I really wanted to exaggerate the intake and exhaust imprint. This isn't an aggressive combination, it's actually a stock block. So you have a dish piston, you don't have the valve relief and you don't see quite the impression that you will probably see with your combination. You do still, however, see the intake imprint and the exhaust imprint and we will be able to see what our clearance is and where the tightest part is. The main thing is that we have clearance and that's what we're getting ready to check. There isn't a one size fits all clearance number for every engine, however, keep in mind some bare minimum clearance numbers. 100 thousandths for the exhaust valve, 80 thousandths for the intake valve, and 20 thousandths for the clearance around the radius of the valve. We're not going to be looking at that number here with this application because we don't have valve reliefs, but if you do, make sure to check those. Also, note that more clearance is not a bad thing. It's not going to hurt performance, so if we see bigger numbers than that, we're good to go. We just try not to and don't want to see numbers less than that. That especially applies in instances like your streetcar applications or your flat tappet cam situations where you will have a lighter spring pressure. If you have applications with lighter spring pressures like a flat tappet application or maybe a streetcar application, it never hurts to add a little bit extra clearance. What you'll do next is take a knife or a razor blade, I'm going to be using a razor blade, and cut the clay in the middle of each valve indention. Or maybe your valve relief in your situation, and pull the clay off of the piston very carefully. Now I'm going to take my calipers and check the clearance. Keep in mind that this is going to look a lot different than probably what you'll see with your application, but the same process and principle still applies. Here you can see that this is a very thin part of the clay, but that is not where the valve is actually indenting into the clay. Here is our indention and we're going to be looking for the thinnest area to check our clearance. Here we're going to be checking the exhaust side first. Going to slowly close my calipers, press this onto the clay. Okay, we are working with 108 thousandths clearance on the exhaust side, which gets us in our tolerable range. Okay, and we are working with 121 thousandths or around about clearance, which is much more than our needed clearance for the intake of 80 thousandths, so I'd say we're good. One last misconception I want to clear up is quite a few people think your tightest clearance is actually going to be at top dead center. That's actually not true. You're going to see your tightest clearances at 20 degrees before or after top dead center. For you guys at home with aggressive builds, if you think that you might not have clearance, proceed with caution. Don't do it if you don't think you have clearance. We don't want pistons and valves kissing even when we're just checking. Piston to valve clearance is extremely important. If you guys have more questions after watching this video, call the guys at Airflow Research and they'll get you set up. Or if you want more information, head over to airflowresearch.com and check it out. That's it for now. I'm headed to the track. See you guys there.